Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. With me here is Victoria. She's joining us from the Netherlands. She's originally from Ukraine. And we'll be talking about the war and the ways that she helps um, Ukrainian refugees. Victoria, thank you so much for joining. Nice to have you. you here. Thank you, Lucia. It's really uh, important for, for me to, to speak about it because yeah. Uh, yeah, what's going on is uh, just... Uh, a big, big drama and catastrophe. Yeah, and um, I asked my guest before, but I wanted to ask you, how, did you or your family suspected that it will come to that? Um, well, uh, before, like a month before, my friends here would ex would, would ask me, like, uh, well, so what, what are you going to do? What's your plan? We heard this news and I was... Uh, I, I was so relaxed and I never thought that uh, anything like that could happen. So I would say I was saying like, oh, we have this uh, situation for eight years. The uh, like the uh, well, I, I can't even co call it conflict. I know that press calls it conflict, but in reality, there is no conflict between Russia and Ukraine. It's just uh, yeah, the ambitions of uh, the politics and who make it up. So so I was like, we have this, and we we kind of used to it. So uh, so I I was not planning to do anything, and then. 24th and mm -hmm. I, even, even when my husband told me you know like they, they are bombing cities I was I was I still can't believe I still can't believe that this is going on and um, yeah it's, and, it's really hard and you have your family there uh, your parents are still there why they didn't leave uh, my mom is in Kiev and um, she she well she said that uh, she's respect um, she needs to take care of my grandmother because she's uh, uh, 84 and uh, it's it's difficult for her to move and she doesn't want to uh, so my mom is taking care of her and also of uh, her neighbor and uh, people uh, like her her sister who stays with my mother they uh, depend on her so she brings uh, products every four days um and uh now she's trying to find some safe place to move together because they are now in different buildings but uh, they want to move together and uh, uh take care of each other but uh it's it's difficult to realize but there is no safe place in ukraine now so every morning i'm just uh yeah like I I take up I pick up my phone and uh, waiting for for messages from them and well they they always respond and say that everything is okay but it's really scary because uh, every day can like can be that they don't write and uh, it's it's just uh, it's it's hard to imagine that things like that can happen in. Uh, 2022 and what about your father and you mentioned your brother before right yes they you managed to move out from kiev because we're from kiev so they you live there but they managed to move out and they went to a village which is uh, 150 kilometers from kiev they stayed there and um, uh, they uh, entered the um, so so-called organization like uh, territory defense um they are not militaries they never like my my father served uh, uh in the army but like i don't know 40 years ago and uh now he's at at his 60s and he need to protect his uh, family um my brother who cannot uh, he cannot move out so he they need to to protect the uh, village where they are now and uh, i'm now um trying to raise money to uh, buy bullet uh, uh, proof vests for them because i thought like well what can i do what can i do i cannot go there do what so so the, the, like i only came up with this idea because they only have helmets and nothing else so uh i'm buying bulletproof uh, uh, vests for them it's uh, like it sounds uh, ridiculous and uh uh not normal but uh mm -hmm. 
because I'm a pacifist and I would never, uh, I know, buy guns or anything. But uh, like we are, we we are trapped in this situation, and uh, this is only thing that we can do. That must be extremely difficult and feeling hopeless because you are outside and you can't even go there, right? Did yeah. you go to Poland? Uh, I saw something on Instagram. You posted. Yeah, uh, I went to Poland uh, to help refugees and uh, brought some uh, supplies from Netherlands. We raised uh, money to also to buy supplies uh, that is uh, uh, necessary now. It's uh, food because some uh, hotspots they they don't have food. They the people are melting uh, snow to have water and uh, and also medical supplies because uh, uh, yeah so, some some territories are just cut from uh, um, from uh, yeah any supplies so uh, volunteers are are just bringing it there and uh, helping uh, clinics uh, like hospitals uh, with uh, with medical supplies how about people in kiev like your parent like your mom um where do they uh, get food from? Uh, is this everything from supplies that they had, or assuming no, everything is closed? No, so some some shops are uh, they they work. So uh, my mom can go uh, to uh, to the shop, and also in the center of Kiev today uh, they have uh, um, a spot where you can uh, get food for free. Um, and I know that uh, many other places are opening uh, now. So, uh, but the, but there are some uh, areas like Mariupol where um, it, it's just cut from from any from everything, and uh, people don't have uh, any food there. So uh, volunteers are trying to get there to bring uh, some supplies, but uh, Russian soldiers do not allow this. And uh, I read that the idea is that people will uh, start starving from hunger so that they can make pictures where soldiers, Russian soldiers give them uh, food and uh, water and people will take it like so to present it as if they are saving them. But in reality, this is uh, people are just starving from uh, from hunger. Uh, this is extremely difficult for everyone and um, and in the netherlands like in amsterdam what are the what is what are the emotions the moods people are outside protesting i'm assuming not only ukrainian people in eastern european yes uh, in amsterdam there was a big demonstration and also i think the biggest was in berlin where uh, around uh, uh, 400 southern people uh, came uh, to the streets to demonstrate and uh, uh, of course europe supports uh, as as they can and uh, uh, the transport in the netherlands is now for free uh, for ukrainians and uh, I know that many, many people are now in Poland, but it's important not to stop because Poland uh, themselves, they will not cope with uh, such a big uh, uh, amount of people, of refugees. So it's important to move to other countries and uh, uh, get, get help from, from um, other European countries, and not just European, maybe American. I know that it's difficult to travel, but... Uh, um, yeah, like, but because Poland is close and it's the land, they 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 never been abroad and they moved to Poland and then it's difficult to to move further. And what about in the Netherlands? Do they provide um, refugee status? What are the refugees getting? It, for now, the law is still not clear. The, the um, authorities are still working on uh, on the law. And um, but for sure, everyone here gets a medical uh, uh, service and and homes. So n nobody stays on the street. Um, the government tries to them them they arrest to to provide uh, uh, places to stay, food. Um, I know people here who um, they came to they had. Uh, uh, um, friends here, so they stayed for some time with them. But then, as they, these friends, they have uh, um, uh, three children, and it was impossible to stay yet under one family. Uh, the government found uh, 
um, a hotel and they now are staying in the center of the city in the hotel they get food uh, like breakfast and um, dinners uh, which is uh, yeah for now it's for three months um, so the situation the children the children uh, can they go to school yeah yeah all all children if even they don't they are not uh, the the uh even like if they don't have any papers at all in netherlands they can go to school and um they get support uh, because uh, netherlands uh, we, here uh we speak dutch and it's uh it's very difficult for for children from ukraine to to go to school from the day one but uh, here in harlem we organize the school uh, on sundays for which will be in ukrainian and uh, at least children can come do some activities uh, get uh, to know each other and uh, maybe uh, yeah it will at least a little bit uh, um uh, to to decrease this uh, level of stress for them yeah. and for their parents as well at this, and uh, you mentioned that you're hosting also who are you hosting and how were uh, they able to get to you so uh we now have four uh four people at home uh, uh this is my aunt my cousin our friend and her son and we went uh, to a polish border to pick them up uh so my husband uh, went with our van and we were so lucky that uh, we had the van and we just bought it uh, some time before so he went there he also they also picked up them some other people who wanted to go to berlin and uh, also one uh, uh boy he was uh, um in well in poland but his mother was here so he, they brought him here also and um so for for they they were lucky that for them it was not so difficult to get because people are standing on the border for uh 13 hours uh, 20 hours like for days and it's um, it's minus 10 at night so i met mm -hmm. people who are with children they were just holding uh their children and standing on the cold and um also it was very difficult for my aunt and my cousin because they were going from um, from kiev they went to a train station and uh it, the train station is just full of uh, people who just try to escape and go to west to, to western ukraine and some people stay in western ukraine and some people are uh crossing the border but in their coupe there were like 12 people you could not move you could not breathe uh, and they even brought cat, so the cat was all. And there, it was not the only cat. There was cat, people are bringing cats, dogs, and all together. And it's uh, it's overnight train, so you can imagine that the train was really uh, difficult part for them. And uh, yeah, and and, and, it, sorry to interrupt uh, yeah. for them and also for other people that you see so in um in the Netherlands that came. Do you think they are hoping and they want to go back or they just want to immigrate and not go back uh, and live in Ukraine? I think uh, they are so lost and uh, many people are willing to go back and they are dreaming to go back. I know one friend of mine, she works for, she works for an American uh, company and she wanted to uh to live abroad at least for some time to to see the world and and i'm uh, texting her now like are you moving out are you moving out? and she says you know what i remember that i wanted to to leave the so, so she knows languages she can work abroad but but she said like i so want to go home and uh, i think it's just it's just it was taken from people <laughs> the sense of home and, and uh, it's it's just yeah like i still can't believe that it's going on and um and many people are just um they they can't get their mind together like even for me but uh i haven't seen like all the horror of 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 that and even if you see it uh, on the pictures or on videos it's so different from 
when, from when you are actually there. And uh, so I don't know, like, uh, and I, I, I think they also don't know. They try to, um, to, to adapt, but it's, it's very, very difficult. Especially for the ones with the children and leaving older people behind because I've heard a lot of um, older people, they don't want to move. They want to stay there. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And like in your case also, and uh, I have a few yeah. friends from Ukraine too. So it must be extremely difficult. I'm really sorry what you're going through. And I just cannot imagine. And I'm assuming the only way to keep yourself sane is to try to help and organize because I see on Instagram you do a lot of work behind the scenes to help them um yeah. what that, would you say <laughs> yeah like uh first uh, first days uh, it was so difficult and uh, um uh I was uh, in shock and uh, my hands were just shaking and uh, I couldn't do anything I was like uh uh with my husband we were in uh um in alps skiing like uh had family vacation and then all of a sudden this happened and i couldn't uh, like what should i do now like like i'm i'm here and my family is there and we went to Courchevel, uh, which is like uh, the the most expensive uh, um, resort, ski resort in uh, in Alps, where many Russian people uh, like uh, normally come. Uh, and we made like small demonstration. It was just me with uh, uh, with the pay with a sign that uh, stop war in Ukraine. And there were many French people who were coming and just uh, trying to support us and saying that uh, um, they are with us. And uh, it was it was very important. Like really, a lot of people came and uh, expressed their their. Mm, consolidation and uh, yeah. and I know that the whole world is with us and uh, this this it, this evil will stop. Yes, but and, uh, uh, yeah. Also, also, like I just wanted to say that uh, it's important. It's very important to do something because when you are when you stay alone with uh, with this kind of news, it's just it's killing. And it doesn't help uh, yourself and uh, nobody like uh, that. Uh, I know that many also also many I have Russian friends who are now uh, very depressed and they feel so sorry. And uh, I always tell them that you just need to do something like uh, maybe an hour a day. Like if you spend, uh, if you donate or go to demonstration or um or you can if you have refugees in your town you can go to your gym and for example ask uh, maybe you want to to accept these people they can come for free or or some uh, cafes have uh, food that they can donate or like there are so many things that you can think of uh this uh, these small things they they really matter and uh there are dutch people who are coming they bring in flowers to our home and uh it it's it's just uh yeah like all the world uh, it feels like the all all the world uh, is with us and uh, with good intention i'm sure that uh, we will um yeah this this evil will be vanished and uh, you, you mentioned already some of the ways that people help. Uh, what are some other ways? What do you, what would you say is the most pressing thing that people need? Few uh, or anything that they really need right now. Uh, so for now, the the most important is uh, of course food supply um, and uh, and medicine and uh, because. Uh, uh, it's there is a lot of uh, medications that it's very that are very limited or it's very difficult to to get them like morphine uh, like well all kind of painkillers because there of course there are many uh, injured people and uh, uh, like uh, surgeries that uh, um, doctors have to do now and uh, so these kind of things uh, are are extremely we're extremely in need of those and um, 
also and, and, and also uh, it was uh, very difficult for me to find the bulletproof uh, vests because uh, in Europe it's uh, it's almost impossible to get the, those so i now found uh, this um, uh, small factory in uh, ukraine that they produce them and they're they're kind of like um yeah people are just uh, it, it, this is at school so they are now uh, making bulletproof vests at school like uh, it's uh, hard to believe but uh, it's hard it, to believe it, and what that's that would do to children yes yes um, yeah so. and, and and you know but uh, like well ukrainians is I, i'm so i've never been so proud of, of being ukrainian <laughs> And I'm sorry, but uh, of course it's okay. But uh, like uh, it's it's like uh, where where will you find? And I know uh, my friend; she's now um, searching for uh, for medical supply, and she also she like she finds people who uh, can uh, who can find morphine. Like where would you find it? But she uh, she finds it, and then she she spoke to. Uh, our prime minister, Dutch prime minister, and uh, also to um, to mayor of Harlem or a city where we live. So it's um, it's so incredible when you start doing something and then somehow magically you can already uh, find uh, like morphine and uh, and uh, all, all, all kinds of uh, like bullet west uh, and even yeah it's magic and uh, and all the people come together and we can we can really like the every action matters today every action matters and every dollar matters so if uh, if you're willing to help please do so and there are many ways uh, there are many um uh, funds and uh, uh where you can donate uh, and uh i posted the, in the comments also the links and especially from the united states i'm assuming uh because as of now we can't host we can't accept refugees but i'm assuming uh financial donations would be best right yeah yeah um, yeah and yeah. Uh, i'm posting this is the link for it's not a link but for the bullet vest that victoria is trying to raise money for and uh, you can send it via WISE, it's an app, or PaySend. Um, WISE is more popular in the States, so uh, it, it was called TransferWISE, now it's WISE. And then all you need to do is put the, that number NL, and then 83 and so on, and her name, Victoria Nosenko. Uh, I put the name backwards, I'm not sure why it's Nosenko Victoria, I'll fix that, but it's Victoria Nosenko. Or you can use the credit card uh, to donate, and um, and then of course there are other ways, right here. Help Ukraine. That NL, right? People can donate. Yes, yes. Uh, there as well. I'm not sure if you see the comments on the screen, but the comment I'm posting. And then the other one is hostforukraine.com. So that is, I'm assuming, in the Netherlands, or no, it's all over the world where you can host it, people. It's it's all over the world. So okay, good. Uh, yeah. And so you, you can yeah. leave your your home also there, and uh, uh, people will know that they are welcomed in uh, in in this part of the world. Yes, yes. And then another one is maphelp.me. Uh, this is, I'm assuming, again, where people can see what's yeah. available. Yeah. Yes. And those are very helpful because, um, especially if you're assuming, I'm assuming if sometimes you go, uh, you don't know where you're going. Like my friend who we interviewed earlier, she said, like, she just wanted to go west. Like, it didn't matter. She had no plan, nothing, just to get away. So I'm assuming a lot of people are like that. And you said... Poland is not accepting any more refugees, or I misunderstood. No, the, 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 uh, Poland is accepts, but Except. it's just there are so so many. There are so okay. many people there. 
that uh, it's it's um, I know that Spain is now accepting uh, uh, and legalizing so all the refugees uh, from Ukraine. So it's uh, yeah. yeah, it's just uh, better to to also to leave some space to new people who are coming. You know. Yeah, and I'll say this because I have a friend who is in Belgium, and it's a long story. I don't want to take a lot of time, but there's. Uh, a lady in Ukraine, a single mom with a boy, and then they, she, the mom met someone uh, when she was in Bulgarian vacation on the beach, and they just had a chat a few years ago, and she emailed him that, because he works in Belgium, that she wants him to help her, and he actually did, and he couldn't host them, but my friend is hosting them, so I would say if you... Um, met someone somewhere or even if you just know someone very little or briefly people are willing to help so yes, just that's true. make that's that true. connection or right yeah i i have some uh, some friend some some people that i met uh, just uh, once or twice or we worked like long time ago and they they write uh, and they say that uh, they can accept refugees and i also yeah. send them these links that uh, uh you can post uh, and uh, your your home that and people will come like uh, those that need because yeah some people are in sweden or in leon and uh of course uh, my my relatives i try to to bring them to, to netherlands because i i have i can help them here yeah yeah so so i really i really hope that everyone can uh, can find the place uh but of course, for 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 young people, it's easier. But uh, for elder generation, it's so difficult to to find uh, something in this digitalized world. And, yes, uh, everyone needs help here. Thank you so much, and I hope this was helpful. I um, we will try to spread the word, and any Thank financial you. help helps. And of course, if you know someone in Europe, because there are a lot of um, immigrants in New York and in the States, of course, everywhere. Um, if you know someone that can host or just help in the refugee center, um, just to get out of there and help. And actually it feels better maybe because I'm from Eastern Europe and I feel hopeless at the moment because I can't really help much. So, um, I'm with that show and financial help. That's at least something that I can do. So I don't feel that hopeless and guilty and i know a lot of russian people feel guilty um it's not that they're responsible but they can help um yeah you know yeah. everyone we can help yeah yeah because it, it it just doesn't help you know like we feel yeah guilty. and yeah. do you mind if i share your instagram uh so maybe people of course, can connect of course. with you yeah. and um yeah i'll like, i yeah, uh, it's just it, it. Sometimes it it like uh, there is a delay in response because so many people write and uh, uh, I try to connect uh, people to to with uh, to find homes or to find transportation or and uh, so sometimes it may take some time. But uh, uh, yeah, but, but yeah. I'm I'm there to, to for for everyone and. Uh, yeah, just trying yeah. to survive in this crazy world. I'm wishing you, I, I, I hope this ends soon. And I, I wish that you have the strength and the emotional strength to, you know, help as many people as possible. And of course, for your family to feel safe, to be safe and for all the people yeah. Um, yeah. in this. Yeah, yeah let, let's this pray madness. for that. Thank you so much, Victoria. And nice to have you on the show. Thank you, Lucia. It's it's really so important to to have the moment to to share with people that uh, yeah. every every one every action every every dollar and cent matters. So please, uh, if you are if you are willing to help, you are always welcome, and you always can find ways. Yeah, and I just want to say this. I always say that. I just want to say this, but. Um, like you said, you're a pacifist. A, a lot of people, um, if you're donating, it doesn't mean the money go for guns and uh, killing people, you know, because people are, of course, like me and you, we're against 
wars and yeah. anyone dying, but th this money would go for just helping innocent people that have nothing to do with politics and anything. It's just people that are uh, dying and starving and <clears throat> suffering at the moment. So this money would go for humanitarian help and not yeah. guns. Yes. Yeah. But also, but also, like uh, it's important to know that uh, that we are just protecting ourselves. That uh, you know, like, uh, what would you do if someone comes to your home trying to kill you? Like, you need to react, and uh, and this is normal. Like, it's your, it's our in our uh, blood, in our DNA to protect yeah. ourselves. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lucia. Thank you. It really yeah. matters. Thanks to you so much. And we'll stay in touch. Bye. Yeah, let's, let's hope for the best. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time on the show. Bye for now.